Hello and welcome to the sixth and final episode of my helicopter deep dive. In this episode we will be going over some combat basics. Now each airframe is going to have different capabilities and parameters, so I'll focus on the fundamentals. I suggest you have a go in your helo of choice and refine it by experimentation. Let's get started. Combat. Formation basics. Everything's better with friends and flying helicopters is no different. You can cover and watch over each other as well as being able to carry lighter payloads individually than a one ship would. This involves a flight lead who is in charge of where the flight goes and what it does. The wingman follow and cover and avoid crashing into the lead. Horizontal spacing is in either distance or rotor diameters. You wouldn't want to be within one rotor diameter of another flight member. Lead will call what formation they think is right and it's the wingman's job to be where they're supposed to be. There are two main categories. Close formations. Close formations are mostly for showing off or bad weather. Examples of close formations are Vic with three or more aircraft, Box with four aircraft, Finger 4, four aircraft, Echelon, two or more aircraft, Line Astern, two or more aircraft, and line abreast, two or more aircraft. If behind another flight member, wingmen should also take some vertical separation. Lead must make sure not to use sudden turns and not to bank too much when turning. Ideally, lead would call turns on comms. Tactical formations. This is where you'll spend most of your time. These are largely the same as the close formations, but pushed out much further. You'll mostly use echelon, line abreast or line astern, with the aircraft pushing out to three quarters to three miles between one another. Defense basics. There are two key points when it comes to not getting shot down in rotorcraft. Stop and hide. One of the joys of being in a helicopter is the ability to land almost anywhere. If you find there are bandits in the air around you, you can always land until your friendly cap comes and splashes them. Sudden contact. If you stumble across an enemy, the crew member flying is in charge of either shooting or running away as necessary. The other crew member should focus on the enemy and get ready to use countermeasures, keeping an eye out for obstacles or hazards. Offensive basics. So you've found something you want to shoot at. There's a handy sequence to make the best of it. The four T's. Target, talk, trim and target. Target. Make sure you're attacking the right thing. Make sure you're using the right weapon and it's armed and pointing the right way. Talk. You'll be using one torque setting for the attack run, as changing it could throw off yours or the crew's aim. Or if in a hover, change the downwash that would affect projectile flight. Trim. Make sure you're in balanced flight and trim. Being turned out one way will send your weapon out that way. Target. Re-verify the correct target and weapon setup. Attack methods. Hover fire. Hover fire is any firing from any speed below effective translift. It would be stationary fire if you're actually still and moving fire if not. This can be done in or out of ground effect. This is generally less stable and therefore less accurate than other forms. Though if you have guided munitions, you should be as accurate as you otherwise would be. Allowing the craft to drift with the wind may help stability. There are benefits, however, in that AAA or SAMs may have a harder time finding you. Though should anyone find you, even small arms fire can have a good chance of hitting you. So make sure you're not hovering next to anything scary. On a similar note, once you've opened up and engaged the target, get out of there and reposition. Diving fire. This is the preferred method of moving weapon delivery. It requires you to be able to fly at higher altitudes, so a significant SAM or airborne threat might prohibit this. You'll be less vulnerable to small arms fire and very stable, so more accurate. 10 to 15 degrees is your normal dive angle. 15 to 30 degrees is your steep angle. Bear in mind, you will accelerate through the dive, so choose your entry speed accordingly. Make sure you have planned an escape route for when you pull off the target. The last thing you want is to nail the target and then fly into a wall. It should be noted that flying over the target area is a bad idea. 
They will be awake, angry, and you'll be right overhead with no real visibility of the target. Plan your attack to finish firing in time to turn away. The process goes, start about 5 miles from the target with terrain masking. Climb high enough until you can see the target and it is low enough below your horizon to fit into either the normal or steep profiles. Run through the four T's. Pitch forward and start your dive. When you're within range, fire. Quickly break off and use terrain to cover your exit. Running fire. Running fire is our last option. It's a forward flight delivery method that should help you hide from SAMs and AAA. A small descent can be performed to aid stability. Don't fly slower than your best climb speed. The faster you go, the less time you'll be exposed. However, you'll have less time to fire. Again, start at about five miles from the target with terrain masking. At about three miles, climb just high enough to see the target. When you're within range, start a small dive and fire. Quickly break off and use terrain to cover your exit. There you have it, the end of my rotary wing deep dive. If this is the first episode you've seen, I encourage you to go back and watch some of the previous ones. I hope you've learned something. I definitely did. Thanks for watching. Learning with Lover.